remember the vertical line test. Um, and so that's where it'll come to be. And by the way, whenever I have to go on to Desmos, I kind of can't record because it won't record Desmos. If I switch to the Desmos screen, um, it just, I guess you just hear me talking, but you don't see it. You would have to, I guess, go into Desmos on your own. Okay. This camera only records what's here, like what I'm writing. Okay. All right, look. So if you switch your X and Y. All right, look. Because the negative two is contained in this radical, right? It's it's part it's part of the radicand. You cannot move it. So now, what's the inverse operation to square rooting? Squaring, right? And although I didn't put parentheses around here, technically, right? It's assumed you're squaring the entire radical. So now I get x squared equals, and so when you square a radical, the radicand just comes right out unchanged. So I just write y minus 2. It's really easy. Like you just keep, it's so systematic when you solve inverse functions. And so now you just take that constant over, because now it's separated from the y term. It's a completely separate term. And so I get x squared plus 2 equal y, or you can switch it. Or you can write inverse, right? It's all the same. Um, say for 18, because of negative 7, you would first move the negative 7, inverse operate it to where you have x plus 7, and then you would square root. However, what am I doing? x plus 7 rad y. 18, but now when you square it, just for those of you that want to jump ahead, do not expand this out. You know, FOIL, expand, right? That repetitive distributive property. Don't do that. Just leave it as x plus 7 squared equal y. Just leave it as that, and that would be your inverse function. Okay. Because and by the way, if you try to expand it, especially if you guys are studying for SATs or whatever, it does not come out to x squared plus 49. That's not correct. It actually has three terms. It's going to be a tri trinomial, right? By the way, we, are, we do have to review um, factoring and expanding or foiling in here because um, when we get to cubic functions and others, sometimes we do make you clean it up for us. And so you have to be able to foil, right? Fair enough? Okay, so tomorrow, Desmos, so either you just have your phone charge or Chromebook charge. I will do it on the screen as well. We'll do them together. You'll get these little graph papers. Um, so it's not a big graph like this type of graph paper. They're these where it's, uh, it's really nice so we can have like eight graphs and then you would just number it to this worksheet so you know which one it references. So if you guys are taking a quiz, you just kind of know what to look for. Okay? All right, let me turn this off.